Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 16 of the Sean Lowry Show, where I'm going to pull my thoughts together on Kanye West. He had this new album come out. Why does everyone care about him? Why do I care about him so much? I don't listen to a lot of music, but for some reason, I'm always so interested in Kanye, and I don't really know 100% why, so I've been thinking about it. But I talked about it a little bit in my last podcast with Brady Hester, but I didn't feel like I articulated my thoughts well enough on Kanye, so... It's a good opportunity for me to pull my thoughts together on this, and it's kind of loosely planned, so let's see where my thoughts go. Uh, But yeah, I don't know why. I've always loved Kanye West, and I respect him because it's so hard to stay relevant, and I always admire people who can do it in music, especially culture, even business, but especially music. Like, where's Nelly? You know, where's Ja Rule? Where's even Justin Timberlake? It's hard to stay relevant in music, and I always ask myself, why do I care about Kanye? So first of all, I have an inside track on an opinion on him because I absolutely have loved him ever since he came out, and I really just like the music. He is known to be able to see music, and I can his beats. I'm talking about the beats specifically, the sounds, the music. It's amazing. He has a special skill for the music, so it's not always about his message or his rapping for me. The music is so well-produced and amazing, so that's one of the reasons he's always been my favorite right off the bat, and some people who might have opinions on him now that haven't always liked his music, I've always liked his music. So I've always been a fan of him. I had it driving around in my car, and it was actually my nickname. I lived in Chicago for three years and moved to Philly, and the basketball team, since I was from Chicago, they all called me Kanye. So he's always been a little part of my life ever since he came out. Uh, But the music, the music is the main reason I loved him. The lyrics are fun, and he's always got his ego going and everything like that, but the production quality and the sound of the music is amazing. But somehow over the years, besides for the music, you know, he's become a cultural icon. And he would actually be the uh, perfect person for like a Comedy Central roast. He has so much material there. And I bet you he would do that one day. But he's not always clear. I basically see his kind of career outside of just the music, even though that's always part of his career because he's always talking around times where he's releasing his new albums. But I see it in three stages. So basically... What he was for the first 10 years is just an egomaniac. Everyone loves me. I'm amazing. I'm the best. Egomaniac. Just a typical rapper. Money, cars, you know, stuff like that. And then more recently, he went into this second stage, which was this free thinker stage. And this is where he came out and liked Donald Trump. And a lot of people didn't like that. And people didn't expect that from him. And he doesn't care what people think. He's a free thinker. No one can tell him what to think. And that was kind of the second stage. And now recently... He's in this religious stage, which I'll talk about and I think is interesting, but that kind of got flipped on my head. But yeah, he broke through with the music and his ego and just being great and, and, you know, being with Jay-Z and he's genuinely talented and, you know, a lot of people break into the music field, but he broke in for the music and just talking about being the best in the ego and just being ridiculous and being ridiculous is a great way to get people to know you at first. But, you know, we had the Taylor Swift thing where he got on stage on the award show and says that Beyonce deserved this award, not Taylor Swift. And then Obama called him a jackass. And that was a big moment. Uh, you know, and then he married Kim Kardashian, which I think is interesting. And honestly, I love Kim and Kanye. I think they're so cute. Like, <laughs> you know, she's like got the video, the sex video. And, you know, he's known for being a rapper and talking about girls. And they're actually like a loving marriage. And they have all these kids. And now he's like religious. And he's and I really just love Kim and Kanye. I, I love Kim Kardashian. I respect her. You know, she's got famous for doing nothing, but she's smart and she's a great marketer. And I've always loved Kim. I've always loved Kanye. And now they're in this like happy marriage, which is like random and weird and different in like Hollywood and LA. And if they ever broke up, I'll be devastated because I love Kim and, Con- Kim and Kanye. Uh, but yeah, and then, oh, and then the one time he was on Ellen DeGeneres and it was the weirdest clip ever. And this was during, you know, his first stage where he's just Kanye. And oh, I'm going to play a little clip of that because this was when I was like, what, who is Kanye? This is the weirdest moment. And this Ellen DeGeneres interview was the weirdest thing ever. Here's a little piece from it. Park. Now everybody's trying to try. I don't give a how much you sold. If you playing on radio, are you connecting? Picasso is dead. Steve Jobs is dead. Walt Disney is dead. Name somebody living that you can name in the same breath as them. 
Don't tell me about being likable. We got a hundred. <laughs> All right, but then the second stage was this was this free thinking stage where he came out, said he loves Donald Trump. Everyone got mad at him, and he actually went to the White House and met with Trump. And he actually went on a weird rant there too. It was very similar to the Ellen Show. But he's just a weird guy, and I was so disappointed when he didn't go on Joe Rogan because I love Joe Rogan, and they were tweeting to each other, and Joe Rogan was talking about having him on, and that would be the best guest ever to sit down and talk to for three hours. And I was so disappointed that Kanye never did the Joe Rogan interview. But I kind of understand it, man. He's weird. And looking at him at that Ellen thing and at the White House, like maybe a long-form conversation where you're practical and think things through isn't the best form for him. He's better in like spurts and spirits. He's not the best at articulating his thoughts. But during that Trump stage, he came out with a bunch of different songs too. He had his album, which I thought was all right. But then he had that one song, Love is the New Money. Like, I love that song. That was such a nice, loving song. And then he had this other song, which is ridiculous, and I love this one too. But, yeah, he's just always flipping things on his head, and you don't know what he's going to do next. And now he's in this religion stage, and Jesus is King, great album. There's a lot of good songs from this album, and I think it is one of his best produced albums. The sounds are amazing. There's no curses on the album. There's no swearing, and it's very religious. It's kind of repetitive, and it's all about how he loves God, and it's all about God and Jesus, and everything goes to them. It's kind of repetitive in that way. Oh, but the production on this album, Jesus is King, is just amazing. Here's a few of like the best sounds from it. How you get so much favor on your side? Accept the measure, Lord and Savior, I replied. But yeah, the religion thing is so interesting to me because, listen, I like, I'm really not that religious. I don't, the God from the Bible is stories and they're really good stories. The Bible has amazing stories that uh, can teach some foundational things to people. But I mean, I think the stories are made up by people over time and I don't think Jesus walked on water because I believe in physics. So the, the stories from the Bible taken literally, I think is ridiculous. And then, you know, organized religion and the Catholic church and then, how boring going to church is every Sunday. I basically haven't been that religious, but I have always said that I think if everyone did believe in a higher power and did believe in like an afterlife, that the world would be a better place. And, and I do think that. And I always said that I believe in spirits in energy and emotions and momentum, and we don't understand our bodies and our minds fully. So some type of higher, higher power, higher energy, I'm into that. I, I'm open-minded and I'm 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 kind of spiritual. So that's my always been my, kind of my take on religion. And then Kanye kind of has taken this. And yes, he is talking about the Bible and religion, but he's not really talking about a specific church or to go to church. He's kind of just bringing this spirit and this energy to it. And with this cool music behind it, like 
I'm kind of 1% more religious, 1 or 2% more religious from this album, from, from hearing him do it. Like, I still don't, uh, you know, literally take the Bible or anything like that. But, hey, man, I'm open-minded. And, you know, Kanye's kind of bringing a cool approach to religion. And it kind of makes me like it a little more. So I'm honestly 1% more religious uh, after listening to this. So he does have an effect on me. And, you know, I kind of liked when he did the Trump thing. He came out and he was just confident and a lot of people you know politically didn't like that i liked it and it it made me love him and it made me care about what he says and then now he's coming out about religion something that i haven't been a huge fan of and it's now i can kind of understand how uh the people who didn't like trump felt about it because i'm kind of like oh religion like come on man but I'm open-minded, and I'm never freaking out about anything. I'm always thinking things through, and hey, he flipped it on me a little bit, but he's making me a little more religious, opening my mind to it, and he's think, making it kind of cool for me. So, you know, he's always making his audience, f- like, confused. And, oh, my God, the Poopity Scoop song – for people who don't know, he was releasing a new song and he was piping it up. He's like, new song, new song, coming out. Hyped it up for a day or two. Finally released it. And it was like a five-minute song. And the first four minutes were this awesome beat. And everyone's like, okay, when are you going to start rapping? And at the end, he just goes, poopity scoop, 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 poopity scoop, scoop. And he just, it was a troll. It was a huge troll. Amazing beat, stupid-ass words. And I love that. I love that. I love when he's messing with people, and it's kind of funny. And then I got mad this time when he didn't put the album out because he said he was going to put it out late September twice, and then he never released it. And then he finally put it out, and I predicted that he wouldn't even put it out that day, and he did. He's a hard guy to predict, and that's what I love about him. I'm going to make a prediction now. I'm going to say that he's not going to be religious forever. I don't think he's going to stick to this religion thing forever. And I think in a year or so, his next album might go back to more standard rap or something else. But I don't think he's going to be on this religion thing forever. But he's a hard guy to predict. But I'm putting that one on the record. Uh, But yeah, I love people like him. And this is maybe why he wouldn't be a good podcaster or wouldn't be good on Joe Rogan. But he uses his ego as a tool. You know, it's something I like and I want to start doing more. uh, But he uses his ego as a tool and... He's just always making everyone think. So basically, if you combine his amazing special musical talent where he sees music visually and he's the only rapper who breaks down songs at the end. He'll rap and at the end, there'll be like some two-minute musical breakdown with no lyrics and it's amazing and I love that. And then he just loves everyone. He's, he, he, he doesn't care about race or culture or religion. He just loves everybody. So he combines that in there. And then his ego and him being Kanye West and then flipping everyone's perceptions. That formula has worked for him. And that's why I care about him. And because I'll always listen to his albums. And when he's promoting one, I'm excited. And then when he starts talking about things in culture, I get interested and everyone does. And that is a formula that's worked for him. But it's not a formula that is easily repeatable. He's special. You know, and it's awesome to have a, a product like music where product is the content and you know you're basically selling two things you're you're selling you know albums clicks streams people listening and then tickets so it's a cool different business model that i don't know about and and music allows you to your product to make you money and when your products listen to uh you don't have to like explain or talk about things. It's your music, and it's more of a performance. So somebody who is a talker, like a podcaster, they're usually talking about things and documenting and being logical. But with music, you just kind of can say whatever and release your music, and if people like it, then it's an awesome product to have. And it's interesting to me because I've had success selling products online, e-commerce, and I really feel like I've done an amazing job building everything up, grinding, being successful, but... With this podcasting, I'm just kind of dipping my feet in a different kind of business. And it is different because you're trying to get people to listen and and get their time. Right now, I'm trying to get people to the website, buy a product, and uh, get them as fast as possible to check out. Uh, This business is more about getting people's attention and having them listen. And it's a new thing for me. And I haven't been successful in it. So I'm interested in people who are good at it and people like Kanye. And 
you know, I need to do a better job. Like, I do care about my legacy. You know, I want to be known and I want to, and I think I'd be a good person that can handle and, th- and thrive uh, negative criticism and attention. And, you know, I'm doing this because I feel like I have a passion to share and connect with people and provide my unique insight on things, you know, especially business. I love business. And I really believe and I know that I'm special and I'm built to run companies and I want to be someone special in the world and I want to inspire others. And I know that I know it can be special. And in my first 16 weeks of kind of podcasting and talking to the world, it's been fun, but I'm definitely still trying to figure out exactly what I'm doing. And I've been consistent with this weekly podcast, but you know, when I first came out, I was doing all the videos on Instagram and connecting with people more. And the truth was I had an awesome uh, camera guy who this guy, Ian, who was helping me out and he was committed to it and we had an amazing meeting and that's one of the reasons I started doing this. He was going to be on board with me and help me build everything up because I do run my business all the time that I have and I wanted to put a few hours a week aside to do this and I'm still doing the podcast, but I do need help with the videos and the editing and uh, it's something I'm going to... I'm like I've, It's been bothering me that I started. I started doing something and putting things out and I've kind of the last month been on a hiatus I've still been doing the podcast but I haven't doing it been doing as much with connecting and putting things out on social media and it, I think about it all the time and it bothers me but I do need to get I, I, it's something that it's hard to do on your own and maybe I'm not making an excuse and you know I've been going back and forth in my head saying like why do I even have a podcast Jeff Bezos doesn't have a podcast what's the point What's the point of doing this? I always am confused versus document versus create because I'm trying to build a big business. That's my main thing. But I keep coming back to this and I love doing this and I still have a long way to go. And I'm not trying to follow a path that's laid out by anyone else. I'm not. That's one of my things. I don't want to be follow a formula. So this podcast, I don't know exactly where it's going, but I'm getting on here once a week and talking about whatever I want and it's going a couple different ways, but I want to do a better job and I'm going to keep this up because... It's fun, and I want to be somebody, and I want to share my voice, and I haven't been doing a great job lately, but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep pushing, and I know that it takes patience, and I know that things have ups and downs, and I'm not working with this camera guy anymore, and I'm upset that I'm not. I wish I was, and you know, it's okay, though. Everything that happens is my fault. Everything is on my shoulders, and I'm going to figure out the next step, but damn so this started about kanye and i ended up talking about myself but hey what's more kanye west than talking about yourself and talking about how great you are and he's a special guy and he's somebody that inspires me he's always inspired me to be great because he doesn't care what people think he goes hard he does what he wants he's a free thinker and that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to carve my own path out i'm trying to be a business podcaster somebody who is helping other people somebody who's sharing my mission and i was talking to one of my friends the other day and he said hey man just knowing that you're out there and he's one of my few friends who is entrepreneurial and try to start a business my boy bime and he said just knowing that you're out there hustling every single day and building something just knowing that makes me inspired to do my thing and start up my own thing and figure it out where I can quit my job and be on my own. It's hard to do what I've done and I've done it and I've been successful and I'm just getting started. I'm going to the top in business in this. And right now I'm just going to keep pushing and I'm built for something great. And Kanye West, thanks for inspiring me. So peace out everybody. I'll be back next week. Bye-bye.